Hey Live, I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. We have two fabulous shows today, but before I introduce the first guest, I just want to make sure you had a happy holiday and that you're not in a food coma. And if you are, best thing to do is just drink lots of water and Wait until you're hungry to eat, and first thing you eat is greens. I want to show you one of my very favorite uh, Christmas presents. So what this is, this is a t-shirt quilt, and I appreciate it when people give me presents, like this one from Elspeth Feldman, but I'm not a real t-shirt person. I like them before they say it. I just don't really wear them, but I've worn them on the air to thank people. So I took them all. And now they're a quilt and I can remember all the great people that gave them to me like Sherry Lee and Shada and Kenny Malcolm and uh, Vegetarian uh, Summerfest and Linda Middlesworth and my Reiki guru Ananda and Sharon McRae and Jeff and it goes on and on and Toby gave me this one and Brenda gave me this one and I kind of trying to remember the names of the people. Oh my God. What's the name of the sanctuary? She got Renee gave me this one and uh, oh gosh, I should have waited. Uh, and Marae Reddy gave me this one and Deb gave me this one and it goes on and on. And Kurt also gave me this one and Linda and Shada gave me this one and it's so cool. Oh, and Elaine, my best friend since I'm 11 gave me this one. So it's just really cool. And it's a nice soft little blanket. So that's really cool. So if you got me a t-shirt, that's where it went. Thank you. Anyway, so let me introduce today's guest. She's been on the show before. And when she was on, you said we had to have her back because she's really, really talented. She has an amazing bro bro blog. And hopefully that blog maybe will be a book one day. You never know so that we can hold it in our hands. And she's from Ann Arbor, Michigan. And she's going to be doing plant-based burgers three ways. I'm so excited, especially for the one with beets. And the show will be, the recipe will be in the show notes. So if you're watching on Facebook, unfortunately, you can't see the show notes. So that's why we suggest you watch on YouTube where you can see everything. Please welcome back Vicki Brett Gock. How you doing and happy holidays. Hi, Chef AJ. I'm so happy to be here with you today. And I'm so excited to share burgers three different ways. These are all really easy assemble in one bowl kind of burgers made with all kinds of fun ingredients. And, you know, I think all of us like holding food in our hands and there's something very um, enjoyable about the comfort of something that's, you know, burger like that we can enjoy on a casual night, quite, kind of cozy stay home days like many of us are definitely having this time of year. And so burgers are, I think, a nice way to do it. You can make them hot, fresh and eat them just like I'll show you today. And also you can freeze them so you can have leftovers anytime that you can just grab one and warm it up real easily. So we're going to start with what I call a grand slam tempeh burger that also has sweet potatoes and spinach in it. And um, we're gonna start with a package of tempeh. So I actually just got this at Trader Joe's and we're gonna just open this up, score it and put this into the food processor. So we're actually, all three of these recipes are food processor friendly. So I'm just sticking the four chunks of tempeh into here and we are next gonna put in an onion. I just took one small Vidalia sweet onion, not really Vidalia, I think this time of year, but just a sweet onion and quartered it. We're just going to add that to the food processor. And then we're gonna add about half of a box, a five ounce box of baby spinach. I like to put a little paper towel folded in half to absorb the moisture. I feel like it keeps it a little fresher. And I don't really measure this, although my recipe says two cups. I really just do two big handfuls and it turns out to be approximately half a box for my hand. Um, but I just am putting in, you know, this type of green and I use baby spinach in this one, but I have actually used baby kale before. Um, I have um, used a mixture of other um, vegetables that I have on hand. I've used zucchini here. So I'm just gonna put that in as well. And then I'm adding an eggplant. And I say it's about a cup and a half or so. Um, it's a medium, this was too small, sweet potatoes that I just microwaved. I actually did this just a little ahead of time so it wouldn't be too hot to touch. Um, and so you could bake it in the oven, you could steam it any way you want it. But I actually just microwaved it for a couple of minutes ahead of time. 
And then I'm putting in a third of a cup of ground flax meal, which I actually keep in the freezer normally, but I measured out my third. And then one quarter of a cup of balsamic vinegar. And if you want, you can add a little bit of kosher salt or Creole seasoning. Now would be the time that you would do that. But it's really good without it as well. And now we're just going to process this up until we have kind of a chunky, chunky texture that is nice, to, nice enough to form into a burger shape. And so we'll make a little noise for a minute here. going to open it up and kind of pulse it down. We've got a couple of big chunks I want to get ground in here. Got a couple stubborn pieces of potato and onion, so we'll just try to get those chopped up nicely. Vicki, Kathleen says, could you do this in the Vitamix? And the people that are asking for the recipes, guys, look below the video. It's called show notes. It's there. I just put it there myself. You definitely could. All right, well, normally this kind of blends up really nicely, but I've still got a couple of big chunks. So I'm gonna work around those as I form my burgers. This recipe is gonna bake on a cookie sheet that you put parchment paper on or a silicone baking mat or um, even um, a griddle, which is what I'm gonna use, something that is oven safe that's nonstick. And I'm gonna pull the blade out just for safety here. And although I've got a couple of big chunks, I'm going to kind of move those aside. Normally I don't, and I would spend more time blending, but I don't want to do that right now while we're trying to get stuff into our oven. We're going to bake this at 425. The rest seems nice and smooth, but for some reason my blade was being stubborn. So now we've got a nice bunch of, um, a nice really kind of a burger batter that has a lot of color in it. And that's kind of why I'm calling it Grand Slam because this is really like a full meal. It's really lovely because you've got potatoes, spinach, tempeh, all in one. And of course a burger's kind of like a full meal anyway, but I like to make sure that it's got all these nice flavors as well. So then I'm gonna form a ball that's a little smaller than a tennis ball. I guess it's a kind of like a big ping pong ball maybe about two inches across. And this is gonna actually make about 10 or 12 burgers, but right now I think I'll probably make about eight and save the rest to just turn into burgers later in the day or even tomorrow you could do that. So we'll get these in the oven, about eight of them. And what I'm gonna do is form these shapes that are like a little two inch-ish ball. And once I've got all of the shapes kind of uniform. I'm going to form them into a nice flat patty. And what I've discovered is that when I bake them kind of thin, kind of smash them down nicely, they bake really evenly. So I like them to be sort of crispy and you could do this to taste however you like it. But I find that if you We've got these shapes that are looking like this, and I'm gonna flatten them now so that a lot of the surface is touching the hot griddle that's gonna be in the, the hot oven. 425 is nice and hot. And I really like them kind of crispy. And since we've got a lot of moist ingredients in here, 
with our vinegar and our vegetables and so on. Um, I think that it, that high heat makes it kind of crispy and gets everything cooking nice and evenly. And you can even turn it, you can flip it halfway through, which we may do. We'll see how they look. Sometimes by flipping them, you'll get, you'll be able to get it a little more golden on both sides, but sometimes they aren't in the mood to flip. So I just leave them flat on, you know, straight up and that works too. So we're gonna put them in this hot oven, 425, for roughly 25 to 35 minutes. We'll see how they look. And normally I would be baking one kind of burger at a time, but I'm baking three today. So I'm actually going to use half of the oven for another recipe that also is at the same temperature and a toaster oven for the third. And so I'm gonna just move this out of our way. And I just wanna mention that this particular recipe is actually in this book called Perfectly Plant-Based, which is the PBNSG, Plant-Based Nutrition Support Group, um, their own cookbook, which I actually helped to edit. And I have seven recipes in here that I contributed. And one of them is this one that I'm making right now on page 105. And PBNSG was kind enough to offer a $5 discount for anybody who would like to purchase this book today or tomorrow through midnight. So I'll make sure you have that in the show notes too. So Grand Slam Tempe Burgers are on the way. Let's set our timer. So we'll take a peek at them in about 25 minutes and we'll get started with our second burger. So our hey. second one, yes. I was, was gonna say, have, no, not a question. Have you ever cooked them in the air fryer? I've done that and they get really crispy. So that is uh, the way that I usually warm them when I'm rewarming in the next day, because that's a great way to get them extra crisp. But this first time out, I don't usually do that because it's kind of a messy batter, but you certainly could if your um, screen at the bottom was nice and forgiving and didn't, you know, stick too much. So um, I haven't really tried it that way. I I'll tell you about my third one, which I have tried that way. Um, so I usually just bake them in the oven, but definitely if you want to put them in your air fryer and you've got a nice bottom to the air fryer, um, you know, the uh, basket that's at the bottom, if that will work for you, that will definitely decrease the cooking time by probably about half. So there we go. And we're ready for our next burger, which is our fabulous beef burgers. So now that we're going to be doing, we're going to be using some beets, which is just kind of such an exciting um, ingredient to use because, you know, a lot of people think they don't like beets and maybe they don't. <laughs> it took me a while to like them as well. And now that I do, I am just really a huge fan and I like using them any way I can think of. But because I wasn't a huge fan of beets, it took me a little while to learn to like them. And this recipe that I created for beet burgers is the way that I first learned to like beets. One of the reasons I wanted to like beets is because they're such a fabulous ingredient, so many health benefits. It's in the top 10 of Dr. Greger's nitric oxide vegetables, beets and beet greens are both in that top 10 list, which are so fabulous for our endothelial cells. So the more beets we eat, you know, we're really, that's a great thing for us to try to do. So we're gonna start with two roasted beets. I actually roasted these in the oven at um, 400, let's see, at, um, I roasted these, I had 350 for an hour. And I also roasted an onion, same time. And so that's right here. We'll just stick that right into our, Food processor. So we've got a roasted beet and roasted on two roasted small beets and roasted onion. I just want to mention with beets, you can buy them, save yourself the trouble if you don't want to roast your own. You can buy them already cooked, steamed, um, or roasted. Um, this is from Trader Joe's and you can find them at many grocery stores these days. They're just already peeled and cooked. Just find them in the refrigerated produce section. And it's such a handy ingredient to have on hand, but I actually did roast my own. I bought beets that looked like this. And one of the reasons I like doing that is because I think the color is even more fabulous when you roast your own. 
they're still good. It's still great rest, you know, still a great ingredient. But when you roast your own, I think the color's even brighter and more exciting. And they also come with greens. And that's one of the fabulous things that we like about our beets is having the greens. So what I, what I, if you aren't familiar with using beets and roasting your own, you would just take your beet and I cut off the top and then I scrub the bottom like you would a potato. And then I stick it into a casserole dish or you could put it in aluminum foil if you use foil and roast it for about an hour. And then I take the greens and I use all of this wonderful green part and I just add it to my um, anything. You can actually just saute it or any way you want. But what I did today was I added it to um, my brown rice. So I made brown rice in a rice cooker and at the, I just added a pile of greens at the top when it was all done and it just steamed itself. So you're seeing in here in my cup of brown rice, some greens that have just been kind of added to the top to kind of cook nicely in there. So we've got our beets, our onion, and now brown rice, which just happens to have some greens in it. You could certainly avoid the greens. You know, if you don't have that on hand, you bought your beets without the greens, that will work too. But since I had the greens, I never want to waste them. They're really delicate tasting too. They're really a nice ingredient. So we've got our brown rice, and then we're going to add a can of black beans. So this is just a can of black beans that has been drained and rinsed. Could, it, could you, have you ever tried it without the beans? Would it work? It would work. I'm sure it would work. And we would just, I would just say, instead of the beans to use something else that will be kind of, you know, binding. So it could be more rice or it could be a little bit of um, fl more flax, something like that. So yes, I'm sure you wouldn't need that. You could put in something that would work instead. Um, so yeah, so we've got our beans and now I'm adding a little bit of balsamic vinegar and flax meal, just like I did in the other one, quarter cup of balsamic and a third of a cup of flax. And that's really our binder kind of helping to pull everything together. And then we're adding uh, some seasoning. So. I'm adding a little bit of salt, cumin, and, a, and actually instead of Creole seasoning, a little bit of Cajun spice. You could leave that out, but it kind of adds an interesting little bite to it. You could add chili powder if you didn't want to use salt. Um, just something that would give it a little bit of interesting uh, flavor and aroma, I think. And then we're going to blend this. And we're done. That's a quick one. Adina wanted to know if in the first recipe you could use tofu instead of tempeh. Well, you probably could. It would probably adjust the cooking time. Tempeh is a lot wetter or a lot um, more firm. I was going to say tofu is wetter than the tempeh is. So, it, you know, you could definitely, you know, many of these things Oops, many of these things that you are seeing are very modular. You can mix and match ingredients. You could add, um, yes, you could do it with tofu. It would just change the texture a little bit and might adjust your the amount of time that you'd be baking it. But absolutely you can. And so now we've got our beet mixture, which is nice and purple and beautiful. And we're going to do the same idea of just taking little, little you know, hand-sized, two or three inch size mounds. And we're gonna create the same idea of a patty that we can turn around and flatten in just a moment. So that's what we're gonna do here. Diane wanted and to know this what- time, Oh, sorry yeah, about that. Diane wanted to know what kind of balsamic you're using and other people asked if you ever use the flavored balsamics. You definitely could use the flavored. I don't for this. I just use a Trader Joe's balsamic for this, which is very simple. But you could use any balsamic that you like, or certainly a flavored one could make some really interesting combinations with, you know, curry or whatever you might like with your flavored vinegars. So did now you get, I got my Did you get the flavored balsamic samples from the first time you were on the show? I haven't yet. 
Okay, then. Well, if they, I I wish I I just, I have so many guests. It's so hard to follow up. I wish the guests would tell me when they didn't get it. So I'm going to contact them again. I'm so glad. I actually placed my order and I got a nice message from, um, from them. So yeah, so I think they're probably just caught in the mail or something. But we're going to flatten out our burgers and they're going to be these beautiful purple burgers. And normally this makes like 10, eight or 10 burgers. We're going to just use, I'm just going to make four of them just right now because that's the size of the pan I'm using. I'm flattening them out again. So they're like this. And I'm going to stick them into the oven, 425 for about 25 minutes. Already smelling really good because of all this wonderful flavor that we've got on hand here. I'm going to just dump this out okay. and take I- our... I sent you an email on Saturday, October 3rd at 12.04 p.m. And I never heard back from you seeing if you wanted the free samples for being on the show. Oh, really? Okay. Well, I have a record that I had gotten a message from. Okay. Remind me of his name. Thomas. Thomas. who told? Yes, he sent me a message and we were in contact directly. So maybe I returned it, the the email to him. I'll, I'll double check. But thank you for looking and I'll, I'll look too. But yeah, he was telling me that he's spent some time in Michigan and um, we had a little correspondence about his experience here too, so. All right. If you're a former guest watching and you didn't get your samples, please contact me because I don't follow <laughs> up. I just assume you got them. And former guests in the United States, we, we don't do anything international just yet. So I'm just putting this aside. We've got plenty of batter here ready to make more burgers, but I'm just moving it aside so we can move into our third one. Thank you for checking on that, Chef AJ. That's very oh, of nice course. of you. <laughs> okay, so we got our food processor doing triple duty here. We're gonna get busy with our next one. So we've got that in the oven and moving on to our third one, which is a falafel burger. And I call this an oven-baked falafel burger, but I actually make falafel in my air fryer as Chef AJ was asking about. Um, and this is a variation of my falafel recipe. So I, one day when I just didn't feel like spending the time forming them and stuff like that, I decided to try it as just a patty, just a burger. And I just really liked it. So that's where this one comes from. And we're going to start with this one, um, with one step ahead that I did do off screen before we met together here today. And that is that I took two cans of chickpeas, rinsed them, drained them, and then I added to that two cloves of garlic and a large onion that I chopped up, and I roasted it all in the oven ahead of time for at about 400 degrees for 45-ish minutes, adding, I used a roasting pan like this, and I added a little water and stirred it a couple of times just so that nothing would burn, but then they get kind of golden and they do start to dry out a little bit. And that gives us a head start on the crunch that reminds me of falafel. Since we're not using oil, we're using a little bit of a sheet with um, drying out the, getting kind of a crunch to the chickpeas as an ingredient before we even get started. So I'm just taking these chickpeas, garlic and onion that we've roasted ahead of time sticking that all into the food processor. And to that, I'm gonna add one lovely cup of fresh Italian parsley, which is just so beautiful and fresh. I love the smell of parsley. And then a half of a cup of oats, which is gonna help kind of stick, pull this all together. And then three tablespoons of tahini. And we're gonna just get every bit of that. And that's kind of an authentic flavor to add to this. And then two tablespoons of hot sauce. I'm just using Cholula hot sauce, which isn't a terribly hot hot sauce. I like the flavor of it a lot. You can certainly use whatever you like. Then three tablespoons of water. 
and then some seasoning. So I've got some cumin and some coriander, two and a quarter teaspoons of cumin, two teaspoons of coriander, and a little bit of salt if you want to, and black pepper. And then we're gonna grind this up. So here we go, we're processing. We've got what we need. So we're gonna do the same idea here of taking these patties, taking this batter and turning it into patties. This doesn't make quite as many. This one turns this batter into about nine burgers. And the batter looks like this. It's kind of crumbly and you know, let's tip that. We're gonna turn this into a few burgers. We'll see how many fit on this round pan. This is actually a pizza pan with a sill pad on it. So I think we can probably put about five on here. We'll see. And we're really doing the same thing. It's just they all smell entirely different. This smells just like falafel with the cumin and the parsley. And these other burgers are smelling really good in the oven. So we're I gonna love, take these. What I love about burgers is they, they really do freeze well. They're one of the things that like, you don't really lose anything. Some foods, they don't taste as good and when they're frozen burgers, always are great. I agree. I love that you can, um, I love that they warm up so well and you can grab a meal even when you haven't had time to do any prep in, you know, during that day. So we're gonna just take these burgers that are currently in this mound shape and flatten them up. This batter feels a little more like cookie dough than the other ones do. It's a little thicker, a little chunkier with the chickpeas in it. I like to sometimes roll them into meatball shapes and make small very, ones or very sliders. Good idea. Yes, absolutely. And I've done that too. I really like them um, it, as um, toppings for salads, as crumbles over a baked potato. Those are all really nice ways to enjoy any of these burgers or wrap them, you know, in a, any kind of a wrap that you like. So we've got our five burgers here and we've got more that we can make later in the day. And we're gonna stick this into an oven that's 375 for about 20 minutes. And there we go. So now we're gonna keep an eye on, we've got six more minutes on this first burger. So let's take a peek. I'm gonna be flipping them with the spatula. You're hearing my rattly oven. How do you normally serve your burgers? Well, I like to put toppings on them. Whatever, you know, I, I whatever vegetables you have on hand, I'm going to show you a couple of ideas that I have for topping these. I'm just, I don't always do this because usually I'm just baking one in the oven at a time, but because we've got two to kind of work around, I'm flipping. 
it from front to back so that it'll cook a little bit more evenly. But what I like to do when we're all done with all of these burgers is to top them with whatever you like. So it could be vegetables like, in fact, I'll show you. I've got this tray of toppings to add to our burgers with, you know, kind of a mix and match. In fact, that's what we're going to do this evening is we're going to have a little burger bar since we're making all these different types of burgers today. And we'll be able to put on, on the sweet potato one, I like to top it with leftover sweet potatoes. So just add a couple to the top of your burger, the sweet potato tempeh one that is, a little mustard. We've got fresh lettuce that's been shredded, some hummus, some non-fat unsweetened yogurt. We've got shredded cabbage, red cabbage, avocado. So yeah, anything you like is just wonderful to put on your burger. So we'll just make room here for our burgers, which are coming out in three minutes or so. Do we have any questions while we're Let moving things around? See, I love that presentation though. That is so fun. Thank you. I have a fun comment from Fran. I saw, I saw someone take falafel mixture and spread it on a pan to make. And when it was done, they cut into triangles. That's kind of a fun idea. Oh, yes, it is. Yeah. Flatlander says, I love burgers, but I'm trying to avoid bread. So what I do is you can do lettuce burgers. You can make potato waffles as buns. Yes, absolutely. You can take any kind of nice round lettuce leaf um, or even cabbage um, or any green that you like, and could be collards, could be something you steamed, um, fresh or or raw, uh, you know, fresh and steamed or or raw, and and then stick it in to wrap it with your lovely burger and use all kinds of interesting toppings on it as well. So it's a great palette to just add all kinds of customization to. And Anita says, when you freeze the burgers, do you freeze them raw or cooked? I freeze mine cooked. What do you do, Vicki? I do cooked as well. I haven't ever done, used the batter as, you know, frozen the batter without cooking it. I think that wouldn't be as easy to manage. I would prefer to cook it first because once you're starting to uh, have raw ingredients that are, you know, it might get really watery when you thaw it and things like that. So I prefer to have it be a nice cooked burger first. And then rewarming it either in a microwave or air fryer is a great way to get it started. Nice. And Mandy wants to know, which of the three are your favorites? So that is a very fair question. But what I will say is, these are all my favorites, and that's why I'm sharing them. I actually have several recipes for burgers on my blog, Ann Arbor Vegan Kitchen, and invite you all to um, sign up for my mailing list so that you'll receive new recipes as soon as they're published. But these are actually all among my favorites that are in continuous rotation. Um, and I do tend to make probably the beet burger um, and the, um, probably the beet burger the most. It's the one that, because again, I just love beets. So now I went from not liking beets at all to loving them. So that's probably the one I make most often. Nice. Let's see what else we have. Oh, Dina says, I like using a large lid, a large container lid to flatten up the burgers. It flattens them easily. Very good. That's a evenly. nice idea. That's a great idea. Yeah, it could use the bottom of a glass or your, I use my hand, but definitely you could use a tool to help you with that. Right. So we've so, got 57 seconds. Let's take a Great. I'll answer a couple of questions to me. Did Where did okay. I get my beautiful tops? They were all gifts from Elspeth Feldman, who was on the multi-chef special yesterday doing the entree. And Roxanne says, did I do the forks over knives course? No, I just went to regular culinary school. And let's see if there's any other questions. Hopefully you guys have found the recipes now. They are in the show notes. What's an alternative to oats, Min Minda wants to know. So I'll let mm. Vicki answer that because I have some ideas, maybe quinoa flakes, but what do you think Vicki? Millet? Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead, Chef AJ. I mm -hmm. usually do use oats for this. So, right. Oh, and uh, Linda says she can't read your shirt, wants to know what it says. Oh. <laughs> okay, I will definitely share. So what I'm doing right now is taking these burgers and just flipping them.
and just letting that steam up from underneath. Stick these back. So my shirt actually says, just eat plants. Can you see that? That's nice. And, you know, I usually do just use oats as a binder, but I have used mashed potatoes and I've used, you know, or leftover potatoes. So that's what I would tend to use is just some other starch, but you could definitely use a different grain. Um, what do you, what would you use, Chef AJ? Um, you know, I, I love millet, so I might try millet, you know, maybe ground up a little millet or something. Yeah. That's what that I'm thinking. Good. My husband's allergic to quinoa, so we don't have any here, but I, I just, I really like millet. So that's, I think that's what I would try. So I've taken our first burgers out of the oven and we'll give our next batch another five minutes or so. But this is what these look like. Those look amazing. So these are nice and um, I'll let these cool a little bit. I like to use Ezekiel muffins as my base for the burger. So what I've done is toasted a couple of ahead of time which I'll show you, we'll just put a burger of each type on there in a second when they come out. But um, if you don't like, you know, I, in fact, I usually do it open face because I think that all the toppings and the burger, um, it's too much, it gets too tall So if you have the top and bottom. So I like it just open face, piled high with vegetables. Um, and so that's usually what I do, but you can certainly do whatever you like. And if you're a person who's avoiding gluten, then, you know, there's lots of choices to like the lettuce wraps and different things like that instead. So let's see, we've got 11 uh, Jesse says, are all three of the burgers supposed to be flipped in the oven halfway through breaking? Because only the falafel recipe says to flip. So you're absolutely right. You do not need to flip. Um, I tend to try to flip them. In fact, I was flipping my beet burger and it wasn't in the mood to be flipped. You'll see that it got a little raggedy along the edges. I tend to try to do that just so that the top and bottom are a little more even, but you do not need to as long as you, um, as long as it's not burning on the bottom. You want to make sure it's kind of getting evenly cooked top and bottom. But that's a great question. Yes, it's kind of optional. And I sort of test it out. You know, it's almost like they've got their own personality when they're in the oven and some feel like they're in the mood to be flipped and some do not. <laughs> Got just a few more minutes on the second batch here for our beet burgers. Have you ever made them on the grill? I don't have a grill, but I wonder if they would So work. I have made um, the tempeh burgers on a grill um, outdoors with a mat underneath it because again, the batter is sort of you know, uh, very pliable and we don't want them to fall through the grill. So as long as you've got it on something, it adds a nice flavor if that's, you know, something that works for your situation to work, uh, to do it on a grill. Yes, that definitely can work. Nice. Yes. So what's going on with PBNSG? I don't know if everybody knows what that is. It's a bunch of letters. So why don't you talk yes, about Chef that? AJ, and... you're coming to see us, aren't you? You're well, virtually I am, you. sure. I, I, I did yes. see you in person once and it was six degrees and I'll never do that again. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a good fit in January, I agree. <laughs> so yeah, what the is- Plant-Based Nutrition Support Group is a very, um, it's a wonderful nonprofit that um, just like the name says, it's a group that supports other people, all of us throughout the community, um, throughout Michigan and beyond, actually throughout the world, it's the largest organization of its kind. And it is dedicated to helping people transition to a plant-based diet. Um, it's entirely oil-free as this cookbook is. Um, and um, Paul Chatlin, who is the founder of the group has an amazing story of recovery uh, from heart disease through this diet that is promoted through through Dr. Esselstyn's care, actually. And so, um, you know, it's just great. So I recommend people take a peek at pbnsg.org. Um, I am actually co-director of culinary education for them and teach classes for the group as well. And we've got, there's dozens and dozens of um, chefs that are 
sharing their recipes on the website and it's dedicated to education as well and community support and Chef AJ is gonna be one of our guests next month. I believe January, what, remind me of the date. I don't remember. Oh gosh, sure. I think it's the 5th. I think it's Tuesday okay. the 5th. Okay. So you yeah. don't wanna miss that. <laughs> Definitely won't be six degrees. No. <laughs> oh, that's, 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 am that's amazing. Yeah, so that's, it's a very wonderful group of um, like-minded people helping each other to um, become plant-based and stay plant-based through all of the challenges that surround us with, you know, uh, life and society and, uh, you know, the, the standard American diet. So it's a great opportunity for, um, you know, take a peek at that, sign up for the mailing list and enjoy the resources. So. I love that. Become plant-based, stay plant-based. That should yeah. be the motto. Yes, absolutely. So it looks like we're just about ready with this next burger. Let's take a peek. Give it a little bit more time. We'll take a peek in three minutes. Do we have any other questions? Let me see. Guys, any questions for Vicki? Let's see. Sometimes. I'm not seeing any. It's a quiet okay. day here on the chat. I think a lot of people are in, their, in a food coma for Christmas. In a food coma, yes. Yep. I love doing them as little meatballs in the air fryer. It's just, they're fun that way. It's a great idea. And it's a, such a nice way to, and they'll cook even faster that way. And I like even just doing it as crumbles and, you know, scattering it over a big, beautiful salad. Um, the falafel crumbles are really great that way. Um, these burgers broken up that way after you cook them. And the beet burgers too, but all of them, tempeh burgers, they're just all great either as a beautiful burger or, in fact, you could even stack two or three if you're hungry because um, they're all nice and thin. I mean, they're just really satisfying and delicious. So, yeah, there's no wrong way to enjoy these burgers. Yeah, I mean, they do take, you know, you have to obviously the baking time. But other than that, then you, you can make so many. And that's like batch cooking at its finest. That's really true. And I do like making them into like little sliders. You can see all the batter that we've got left of this, of actually all three we've got some left. So we'll be able to make um, lots of burgers or burger sliders or crumbles or meatballs, all of them, all good. <laughs> so we've got about two more minutes and we'll take a peek again at our next burger. Let's see how our other one, our third one is doing. And so we've got, I'm just gonna flip these now. Our falafel can... burgers are looking like this. We're going to flip them for their last couple of minutes. We'll try to flip them, see if they're in the mood. If you guys make burgers, put it in the chat what your favorite ones are. You know what? You know, it'd be fun. Have you ever taken eggplant and kind of like put like egg, a slice of grilled eggplant on a burger? Oh, delicious. It's really good. Yeah, these are flipping for us nicely. And these look like they're just about done. It's funny. Sher Sherry Meredith has asked me what my favorite kitchen tools are. Well, I can't answer that because there's so many. So I actually, that's why I finally created an Amazon store. So I'll just put the link to it. But probably if I had to guess, and I'll ask Vicki this too, number one, Instant Pot, number two, Air Fryer. That, that's what I would say. What would you say when somebody asked you your favorite kitchen tools? My favorite is probably going to be Instant Pot first. Um, yeah. So pressure cooker and Vitamix. Those are probably the two that I use the most. Oh, but you I know use what? my Vitamix a lot for dressings and hummus and things like that. I use my air fryer too, mostly for potatoes. <laughs> and I use it almost daily for potatoes. But um, I think my Vitamix gets more variety in uh, the kinds of things that I prepare in there. You know what, though, now that I've got the nut for milk machine, that's definitely at least third. I, it's, a t it's a tough one because that does so much. It's a, it's a, it makes nut butters. It makes plant milks. It's a, it can make the ice creams. It can make, it can be your food processor and your Vitamix. So I'm going to put as my top three, Instant Pot, Air Fryer, Nutra Milk. 
That's it. Yeah, that looks like a great machine. I've seen you show us what we can do with that. Yeah, I mean, and it's a hundred dollars off until January first. So if you guys are considering, I'm actually going to make a couple of videos more today with it because you can even make milk out of oat groats, which I didn't know. I've only done it with oats, with the, uh, you know, the rolled oats. So that's pretty cool. Fantastic. Yeah. So we're beeping. We've got yeah. our burgers yeah. done. Dina, you could have won an air fryer if you had entered my 200th recipe contest, but now that's over. So no more contest just yet. Maybe we'll have something for my 500th episode of this show. Today's show number, let's see, I'll tell you what it is. And you guys can figure when 500 is coming. I'll see if I can get some prizes donated. Let's see, today we show 358. Wow, that's a lot of shows since uh, the pandemic That's amazing, began. Chef AJ, since I'm March or? Since, since March 20th, yeah, wow. Amazing, amazing. I don't mean to do two a day, but I can't fit everybody in otherwise. There is a show at two o'clock today, guys. It's Dr. Nikki Davis, who actually was my first guest. And she's going to be talking about Veganuary, Vegan January. Yes, you do soak the oak groats, Elizabeth. They recommend at least two hours, if not longer. I did your salad, but I am in Canada. No one in Canada won. Uh, that's not because they were in Canada, but I would say that uh, there, there was an air fryer that was Canada eligible from Instant Pot. It was a combination. So, yep. So we've oh, got well. our burgers. They're all a sample of each one. And I'm just going to show you how I might top them. We've got right here, our first one, the Grand Slam Tempeh Burger, and then our beef burgers in the middle, and then the falafel burger on the end. That came out nice and kind of crispy on both sides. And so, you know, whatever you like, I think I'm going to start by maybe adding to putting some mustard on the one with the tempeh. And then you know, it's great. Sa sautéed onions and mushrooms are so good oh, yeah. on burgers. Wonderful. And then maybe a couple of slices of um, maybe a little bit of lettuce on top of that. You know, very few people that eat burgers, that they, I'm talking about meat burgers, just eat the meat. I mean, I guess there's people on these weird carb, no carb or low carb or carnivore right. diets. What people really like is everything else. They like the, the vegetables, veggies. right? Yes. The ketchup, the barbecue sauce, the mustard, the pickles, the onions, yes. the, the bun. And so it doesn't matter what's in between the bun. Absolutely. So now I'm gonna put for the beet one, we're gonna just maybe put a little bit of hummus and then pile our beet burger on top and maybe a couple of slices of tomato. And then for our last one with the falafel, I'm gonna put some non-dairy yogurt. This is actually Kite Hill's unsweetened plain yogurt. And I like this as just for savory creaminess. And we're just gonna pile, oops, put our burger on top of that and maybe just a little bit of purple cabbage and avocado. Oh yeah, cabbage. That's good on a burger. And we've got burgers three ways. That is spectacularly beautiful. I only imagine it tastes as good, if not better. Absolutely. You know, just a little more color. Oh, you are very talented. People want to come over and eat your food oh, right you're now. Oh, you very kind. <laughs> Jesse I was says they're making you, me Chef hungry. I working on a cookbook, so I hope to be in touch with you in the next couple of months as we well, make more When it's out, food. you'll come out and we will sell that puppy because you your recipes are delicious. Last time Vicki was on, she made three little little bite-type desserts, so make, make sure you check out that episode because those were I delicious. Did. Little I bars. Did. That was so yeah. much fun. Yeah. So very that's nice. everything. Well, that's amazing. Well, thank you. And, and you got done in like, not like in no time, really. Right. Now we've got three kinds of burgers that are ready to mix and match with all kinds of fun toppings. And, and you're going to have a great lunch. Go. Or, you're you're, you're going to have a great lunch or dinner today. That's dinner, for sure. Dinner. Yeah. My kids are going to join and we're going to definitely enjoy um, mix and match burger toppings. So that's yeah. great. Well, thank you so much, Vicki. I love your food. You are amazing. My pleasure. My pleasure. So nice to be with all of you. And thank you so much for having me, Chef AJ. Well, anytime. True pleasure. 
Oh my God, the pleasure is ours. And thanks all of you guys for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Come back in two hours when we have Dr. Nikki Davis talking about how to go vegan in January if you're not already vegan. And she's got some upcoming retreat that you might want to know about. She was my very first guest when we started this show during the pandemic. Take care, everyone. And thanks again, Vicki. It was great to see you. Thank you. You too, Chef AJ. Bye-bye.